So last time we were talking about uh, uh, defense mechanisms with respect to anxiety and primarily trying to see how uh, reality, neurotic and moral anxiety they play important role uh, in terms of uh, posing different type of demand uh, on us to adjust. Today we would uh, know, continue with uh, again the whole process of adjustment but today what we would do is uh, we would look at uh, certain minor aberrations okay, that might be visible in people who are trying to adjust uh, in a given situation given the fact that we already know now that how self plays an important role, how certain assumptions play important role and how different types of uh, anxieties uh, you know, gets provoked within the individual. Okay. Uh, after discussing this then we would uh, come to the fact that how are certain types of uh, defense is used okay? and then we would be uh, coming finally to task oriented reaction pattern and defense mechanisms. Okay? Uh, two important uh, constructs we need to understand now one is called uh, neurotic nucleus the other is called neurotic paradox. Okay? Uh, now you all must have heard this word neurotic no? or neuroticism. We are primarily trying to make a distinction between uh, two types of uh, know, behavior that might be visible in certain set of individuals. Okay. One where one by default uh, know, has certain degree of inadequacy, the feeling of inadequacy as well as anxiety. Okay. And uh, this makes the individual decide that he or she should avoid the situation rather than coping with it. The, standard template for uh, the normal human being would be uh, that even though you are in a given uh, no, troublesome situation, finally uh, no, you should try your best to cope with it. Okay? You use certain types of resources for coping that will come a uh, no, little later in our discussion. But then if you start uh, realizing the fact that I am inadequate, no, uh, my skills are uh, inadequate, I am incompetent to handle a given situation, which actually might happen to many of us in certain type of situation. No? Say for example, uh, I have never been into say rock climbing and suddenly you tell me that no, you have to do this. Okay, it's impossible. Now, what happens to me uh, when I have uh, no situations like that? where I realize that uh, my resources does not uh, no, provide me the support to cope with it and my whole sense of inadequacy and anxiety finally makes me uh, decide that I should avoid such situations. Okay? If you take examples like this, uh, the example that I quoted here that uh, no, you are not trained into it and then you are told that there is a possibility of uh, rock climbing and I want you to do this. Okay. Realizing your limitations, you simply accept that fine, I can't do that and hence you cease to participate in that activity, fairly normal behavior. Okay. But re imagine a different situation where repeatedly you come across situations where you decide not to cope with it and in turn you decide to avoid it. Okay rock climbing was one situation. Say uh, in your hall of residence, uh, your uh, gymkhana unit decides to uh, start uh, say elocution competition, debate competition and say you stammer. This in turn could be a great source of discomfort for you and anxiety for you and you decide that no, 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 uh, what will people think of me, what would my uh, batchmates think of me and hence I won't participate. Okay. Uh, there could be a possibility that uh, you know you are not uh, no good at sports and then you are told that we are falling short of one player. No? So just join the team. You know, several such situations you must have experienced no? and many more such situations will come. Usually human beings are capable enough no? as we discussed earlier that it you that could be uh, no, a source of 
one or the other form of anxiety for you, but given the fact that you also have certain assumptions, you would try to explore the possibility that how far could I stretch you know, uh, my behavior in this type of a situation and hence you try your best to uh, you know, acclimatize according to the demand of the situation. At times some of us decide that I need not participate in such events and hence I will withdraw. Okay. Situation specific withdrawal, tendency to avoid confronting the situation rather than coping uh, with it. The, and this whole uh, you know, exercise being uh, propelled by the sense of deeper sense of inadequacy and anxiety. Okay. If it gets overextended to a good number of situational demand that you encounter, then this is defined as neurotic nucleus. That your pattern of adjustment in the given situation now starts uh, showing that you are predominantly using a particular style of reacting to the situation and this is an indicator of neurotic nucleus. Am I clear? Now we come to another very interesting uh, know, uh, dynamics in this, what is called as neurotic paradox. Now in neurotic paradox, uh, first look at the characteristics. No? There is an element of rigidity, there is an element of egocentric but self-defeating behavior. Okay. Self-defeating behavior would be where there was a possibility for you to explore the situation, to exploit it for uh, no coming forward with a given a behavior that you were capable of, but you did not do that. But most interestingly look at the third characteristics, no? that you pragmatically uh, no, do your work, yet you have some neurotic cling in terms of your adjustive behavior. Means that pragmatically doing things would be that uh, the action that you demonstrate in a given situation is all rational based. So you have a justification for coming forward with an action. So the world by and large will uh, know, look at your behavior as if this is a very, very you know, justified act that one can think of this individual. Okay? But then what happens is that you show great degree of rigidity in your behavior. This rigidity gets combined with that egocentric tendency and rigidity and egocentric tendency they combine together okay, making uh, know, you go for behavior which does not allow you the opportunity of personal growth and hence you are basically falling in the trap of self-defeating behavior. Okay. All you gain out of showing that extreme degree of rigidity is that you get some immediate relief from the anxiety provoking situation because you have basically avoided it. By being very, very rigid, by being very, very egocentric, all you do is that you <coughs> reflected to the world that see uh, my act of not participating in a given situation is very, very justified. It is pragmatic, but actually you got relief out of your own anxiety because you successfully uh, no, tried to avoid that very situation. Okay. Now avoidance if you see, it is basically seen in both the sets. No? Neurotic nucleus also has avoidance behavior okay. and here also you find that uh, no, avoidance is used for immediate relief. The distinction between the two would be that here for immediate relief you use avoidance as a mechanism where there what you do is that you start extending this avoidance tendency towards different types of uh, no situations that you encounter. Okay. But neurotic paradox can be seen in multiple types of degrees and then uh, no, multiple combinations can be visible. Now once you have a variable degree, this means uh, that at times you would have very strong justification for avoiding something and at times you would have uh, no, just uh, no, some type of a logic that somewhere satisfies you that this is the reason why. I did not participate in this. Okay. Uh, different types of situations you would find, you know, where uh, normal people you would find that they show different type of either uh, tendencies, you no, know, and that neurotic cling that you find, minus this cling, if you look at the behavior of the individual, the individual is perfectly normal. Okay. 
except when such type of situations comes when the student uh, the person concerned uh, starts uh, showing that fine i while i am trying to adjust i show some peculiar type of things no and this peculiarity if you watch the individual very carefully you realize that this is the peculiarity that is embedded in this behavior of the given individual fine otherwise people with uh, you know this type of clings are doesn't have much of a grave problem minus the small cling that they repeatedly show in their behavior now one possibility we saw was that uh, you show the tendency the characteristics of neurotic nucleus to you demonstrate the characteristics of neurotic paradox the third could be what is classified as transient situational reactions no transient situational reactions basically uh, refer to extreme form of behavior that you see in people when they have extremely catastrophic experience okay uh, for example if you have uh, say you were in a house and suddenly there was a massive earthquake and a good amount of buildings in your locality collapsed there were several casualty hundreds and hundreds of people are missing and the type of behavior that you see in people who are stuck in that type of a situation is usually extremely 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 uh, you know uh, different from what such type of people usually uh, you know were doing in their regular life and that is you know that type of situation is considered to be transient in nature because they are not stable because there is a extreme situation therefore the reactions that the individual is giving is also extreme in nature fine hence they are classified as transient situational reaction unlike neurotic nucleus and paradox which you start reflecting in your behavior as a module of uh, adjustment okay and in one case you try to get immediate relief in the case of neurotic paradox uh, you try to make your behavior very very pragmatic you show neurotic cling you show certain degree of rigidity you show certain degree of egocentric behavior finally you do not allow yourself to grow okay in the case of neurotic nucleus your anxiety doesn't allow you to participate in an act and by default you start uh, you know uh, using avoidance as a mechanism of handling the situation rather than confronting it rather than coping with it okay here also you show extreme behavior but such extreme behaviors are looked as transient behaviors no so they aren't stable in nature and hence are not a cause of concern i would just uh, no uh, digress a bit here and then come back to the remaining uh, set of differences uh, if you uh, look at the psychology literature especially literature uh, that has to do with uh, mental health uh, or trauma psychology you find great deal of uh, no discussion on something called uh, acute stress disorder and the other is called post traumatic stress disorder okay uh, we are not referring to uh, no uh, ptsd or post traumatic stress disorder here Uh, we are simply saying that uh, given a catastrophic experience a uh, very very high intense type of a situation okay and because intensity is uh, extremely high in the situation itself and therefore certain degree of extremities is also visible in the behavior that the individual shows in that situation in order to cope with it in order to adjust according to that situation here we are not referring to ptsd or acute stress uh, little later uh, in another module we will be talking about stress and there we would also be talking about uh, acute stress disorder and uh, the end part of that very module would be where we would be talking about post traumatic stress disorder okay and again there also we will take uh, two contrasting views one the dominant view uh, that uh, this is as this uh, no ptsd involves a set of symptoms and therefore qualifies to be classified as a disorder and the contradictory view point uh, which is not the dominant view point but gradually be becoming stronger 
saying that because this is an extreme behavior in extreme situation therefore, it cannot be classified as a disorder okay. and that is where what refers to transient situational reaction that this is a situation in this situation because of uh, the volatile nature of it the behavior is also extreme, but this is not the stable form of behavior hence individuals behavior should not be analyzed only looking at this frame okay. So, if you run the full frame then you say that fine no this was the normal set of behavior this is what had happened during the situation and this is after the situation okay. Then three important types of defenses the biological the psychological and the socio cultural defenses that are available to us okay. Biological defenses basically refers to the whole uh, immunological uh, balance we try to strike okay and finally, trying to uh, make the our entire physiological system come to its uh, baseline level no? that is the uh, achieving basically the state of homeostasis okay. Great deal of research you would find you know that pertains to uh, immunological uh, defenses and in fact, uh, we would just uh, you know touch that issue uh, as the last module somewhere in the second last or last week of the semester where we would be talking about uh, psychological disorders and we will just we will not go into the details we would just touch upon one set of psychological disorders what are called as psychosomatic disorders okay. And whole psychosomatic disorder has to do with immunological system no? because what happens in the case of uh, psychosomatic disorder is the origin of the problem is psychological in nature the manifestation of the symptom is biological in nature somatic in nature. Okay. So, say for example, uh, uh, development of rashes for example, okay, in a very very localized area in the body uh, could be usually perceived it is it would be by and large perceived as if it is uh, some type of uh, eruption on the skin uh, reflecting a certain type of infection. Okay. Usually, we will never interpret it that fine because this part of the body was to be used in this situation therefore, deliberately okay, uh, the way you have uh, thought of the things your psyche has led you to develop rashes exactly on that very area of the body okay. Uh, very common psychosomatic disorders say, uh, are uh, say ulcer for example okay. Uh, although uh, no ulcer has been uh, attached to different type of work style and eating habit basically there is a you know a jokingly told uh, proverb uh, that if you want to avoid ulcer avoid three things in life no hurry worry and curry okay. So, if you uh, run a life which is full of uh, hurried activities so basically you uh, make your entire physiological system go highly above its baseline level of functioning okay and therefore you have several types of uh, you know uh, biochemical uh, changes that takes place during that period which in turn makes you pay the price for it because there was an excessive secretion of it okay uh, similarly if you are extremely tensed extremely worried again your neurotransmitters are you know, generously secreted and therefore you have predominance of one type of neurotransmitter in your brain compared to the usual balance that uh, is seen in the normal people. And third you uh, know if you are uh, prone of that uh, know that highly spicy food okay that also can uh, know, make certain changes. Curry we are not touching as part of this course, but yes uh, hurried way of uh, leading life and worried way of sustaining life hurry and worry combines together and you can find great degree of immunological research on that. You know. uh, so, basically all you do is that your immune system initially will try to safeguard you against uh, the adversity that you experience uh, from the local environment in your surrounding and given the fact that uh, the situation demands certain things from you. Okay your biological and the psychological system should ideally uh, know, work in coordination okay and that is attaining the state of homeostasis if it fails to certain extent then you have uh, know those psychosomatic disorders coming up okay 
then we come to the psychological defenses psychological defenses here basically refers to the whole ability of the individual to revert back to the original state where one is able to uh, cope with the adversities that one has been experiencing okay so you have a situation at hand you realize that uh, no this is too demanding too taxing for you you use certain resources it could be your individual resource individual resource would be something like uh, your ability to think your ability to contemplate your ability to plan to execute okay your ability to terminate the uh, action your ability to think of the assumptions what could be the possibilities it could also be <coughs> group resources which, which would be the part of the socio cultural defense okay and because individuals cannot be thought of lead, leading life in isolation hence these two resources will always be available to you and you can use them but then finally at the end of the whole exercise you are capable of coping with the adversity that you are experiencing okay so that is the psychological defense what happens if you are not capable of doing that that could also be a scenario no where you try and you fail <clears throat> you try again for the second time in the second situation again you fail and that's where you know if this defense fails this is where you develop some or the other psychological problem those problems we will discuss you know at the <coughs> end of the semester when we would be talking about the psychological disorders okay and the last defense is the socio cultural defense where you have certain group resources available to you and usually uh, you will find a difference between individualistic versus collectivist culture where the group resources usually uh, is uh, you know available in abundance and uh, at no price usually uh, price means the financial power component of it some other type of price we do pay for everything no? and that constitutes the group resource for example in a uh, culture like ours say if you, you no know, look very sad you look in a very say uh, your facial expression your entire behavior is reflects as if you are in a very pensive state of mind many people will ask you is everything okay okay um, i think you are disturbed i think uh, you are in trouble okay and many a times you would realize that even strangers might ask you this okay usually strangers not of uh, your generation okay uh, two generations above i'll uh, share with you a very interesting experience uh, just in this december as a part of uh, some project some work was going on somewhere and uh, an accident took place the person concerned was brought to a hospital here in kanpur was admitted uh, after minor operation was admitted in a room and that room was a uh, twin sharing type of a room okay so already an an, elder, uh, an elderly patient was there on one of the beds now this young boy goes to the other bed okay and a uh, lot of people were <coughs> along with us no uh, because from the given site because that was uh, there was a big team there so a good number of people were there in the hospital so this patient who was very elderly was a retired person from the armed forces uh, he just woke up to go to the toilet okay and the person sitting just in front of him okay he was the patient no the elderly man and he asks the younger man sitting on the opposite side or sab theek thak hai ideally it should have been the other way around okay means i as a normal individual who is you know not admitted in a hospital should have asked the patient okay ki everything is okay but the reverse took place okay uh, and this is an interesting example that it's not only uh, those who are related to you okay uh, they provide the resources to you in terms of you uh, know if you need how many shoulders do you need in a given type of uh, scenario okay but even uh, strangers can come to rescue a great deal of uh, literature you will find on 
other types of uh, no, uh, cultural resources. For example, uh, religion and spiritual engagements both have been studied extensively in psychology in terms of their role in uh, facilitating, in maintaining, in helping the individual regain the uh, proper framework of mind. Mental health literature you will find, uh, no, if you uh, just go to any of these uh, research search engines, no, not the Google search engine, research based search engines, Scopus, Tom, uh, Thomas Reiter. Okay. There you would, uh, know, if you type these keywords, no, mental health and spirituality or uh, religion, you will find you know great number you know, degree of uh, study that has been devoted with multiple types of psychological variables okay and that makes you uh, interestingly realize uh, that certain type of group resources okay in the collectivist form of our society works like anything usually uh, in a day to day scenario if you find uh, people who do don't have uh, proper houses to live in, okay, can go and uh, know, sleep on the veranda of a temple or any religious place for that sake. Uh, you, you have uh, the langars, anyone can go and have meal, you are not asked whether you are a Sikh or a non-Sikh, okay. Simply you have uh, come to pay your ardas and therefore you can go and sit in the langar and have food both the times. There are uh, no n number of temples uh, know, dis distributed throughout the country where again meals are provided to poor people both the times, you know, two meals a day, every day, every day you will find that. Okay. And there are people who take pride in getting engaged in such activities. Okay. Now this type of a group resource works both ways. You know. Those who are deprived, those who does not have the resource can come and have food, their basic necessities. <coughs> fulfilled. Those who are, those who have the resources and pump a part of their money for creating this type of a system, okay, also take pride in doing that, okay. And they say that fine, it makes them uh, feel humble, it uh, know, makes them uh, fine tune themselves much better as a human being and therefore in the whole process of their engagement in such activities, they evolve as a much better human being. Uh, not many a times, but couple of times there has been judgments passed by the courts of uh, different lower courts in India, where somebody who has been uh, found uh, culprit of a small uh, type of a crime, okay, has been asked to uh, do certain type of services in a religious place. I remember uh, one court in Delhi uh, sentenced a young boy to serve in uh, a temple okay, for certain period of time. I do not remember the time period, it was one month or something like this, a small uh, period. Okay. But instead of sending to the uh, no, special houses where they are considered to be on probation and it is supposed that they will get reformed, in turn the magistrate uh, declared that fine you should go and serve in a given temple. Okay. And all he did was simply, you know, in front of the temple, uh, you have thousands and thousands of visitors. You have to, you know, uh, take care of their sleepers. Okay, in our temple, that is also a very interesting dynamics. You now, where you find uh, good sleepers missing once you come out after paying your uh, uh, tribute to the god. And here was a case, you know, where somebody who starts, you know, who is involved in a small act of stealing is made to you know, safeguard uh, sleepers in a temple and because it is an auspicious place, because of your uh, certain values that you have cultivated, okay, you, you know, adhere strictly to the guidelines that find none of the sleeper should be misplaced. One month you dedicate for such type of service and you find that some change takes place within you. Okay. Uh, Many, many uh, Gurudwaras, if you visit, you will find people cleaning the floor. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, they are famous, the famous golden temple, you will find many, many people there. No? And uh, that is the time where you, know, you realize that uh, why, and you will find you know, people who are otherwise well off in 
professional terms, in terms of their financial uh, you know, earnings, they are very well off. There was no need for them to wipe the floor in the golden temple. Okay. But then you take pride in doing that no? and you say that this is a humbling experience. Okay. Now here group resource, what, I'm, what I was trying to show was that group resource can help both ways. No? Somebody who is deprived, somebody who is affluent, both of them are engaged in, uh, with some type of group resources and it helps both of them. The very system of uh, uh, what you call as confession box in the churches. Okay. Something that you cannot share with anybody, you can go stand in the confession box and then talk about it. No? And it's there an anonymous priest basically listens to you. Okay. This is again a great degree of uh, service that is provided by the society. Okay. That something that is still extremely troublesome for you, okay. it creates certain extreme degree of moral anxiety within you and you know that it cannot be shared by anybody else go to the church and share it in the uh, confession box and you are relieved. Okay. Uh, great deal of uh, research has also gone into uh, uh, what type of uh, engagements people show okay, when they have catastrophic experience no? and as a part of their group activity, what do you see in them? The negative side of it, if you see, the darker in a sense that it has certain pathology involved with it, uh, but not so well researched, especially in uh, the eastern part of the world is uh, you know, the concept of mass hysteria. There was an earthquake, uh, even say uh, the Ahmedabad earthquake in Gujarat, okay, and you know, after every earthquake you have recurrent seismic events. For long people used to and that was chilled winter morn, uh, nights, no? early January. And people used to sleep uh, on the roads, on the highway, okay, leaving their houses deserted because they thought that there could be another set of seismic events uh, and they could also lose their life. Okay. Now this is an example of mass hysteria where you see that the whole uh, society starts behaving in a particular way. Okay, something which is not justified. Okay. Uh, the other side of it, the brighter side of it, in a sense that uh, once uh, you, know, you have uh, people who have <laughs> suffered out of it, who have uh, lost uh, many, many members of their family or their full family in this thing, okay. and then you realize that you, uh, you know, a large number of them, they come to the temples okay, and they get engaged in Kirtan. Okay. Kirtan, you know what is Kirtan. So basically you worship God, you sing louder, you play some inst uh, instrument or uh, you, you know, use both your palm for that and basically it is a uh, very, very intense engagement with a religious prayer. Okay. And this has been found to be very, very generously used in our culture. Okay. Large number of sufferers and you start people doing this. Okay. So a group resources. Uh, constitutes all of them and these resources are basically you know the biological, the psychological and the socio-cultural differences all of them they are basically geared towards helping you maintain your mental health so that you do not start sinking down <coughs> okay. and the phases of life where there are certain gulfs where you can just uh, go deep down. Okay. You have your own resources, you have your own defenses, whether it is biological, psychological or socio-cultural that extends a helping hand that come on, okay. you have fallen in the gulf, now I am uh, providing you this helping hand, you can come out of it and regain your baseline level of activities. Okay. In case these defenses fail, that is the time when one becomes a victim of one or the other type of psychological disorder. We are deliberately okay, uh, going very close to the line where we could now start with uh, the abnormal behavior, but we are again, you know, we, are, we are just touching that line and again we come back to the brighter side of life. Psychological disorders we will touch only as a part of our last module, not before that. Now we come to three different types of uh, reactions. First, the task oriented reaction patterns, 
okay. Uh, thereafter we would talk about the damage repair mechanisms and then finally we will come to defense mechanisms. What is the difference between the three? First task oriented reaction pattern basically means that you have a task at hand, you are supposed to adjust according to that situation, you are supposed to come forward with a behavioral outcome, you have to react to, you have to respond to that situation. There could be a set of behavior, okay. They are called task oriented reaction patterns, okay. While executing this task, your ego has been hurt, okay. What do you do then? And that is the whole uh, no, process that we would be talking about with respect to damage repair mechanism. The ego has been hurt, now I am trying to repair the damage that has been caused to my ego. What if uh, no, uh, the damage has not been caused, but I am apprehensive that this might happen, then we use the defense mechanisms, okay. The distinction between uh, the three would be that defense mechanisms are <coughs> unconsciously used uh, <coughs> no, mechanisms. So you use it, you have it in your behavior, but you are ignorant about it, because it is unconsciously. Uh, no, utilized, whereas the remaining ones you are aware of them. The first task oriented reaction pattern is attack, where individual tries to remove or to surmount the obstacle. You are heading towards a direction, there is a, a certain barrier and uh, you have to basically overcome the barrier, okay. There could be multiple ways of doing that, no you take another route, you try to slide the barrier to one side so that you can make your way, okay. Or you just jump above the barrier, okay. The uh, no, parallel example could be from the track and field events where you have the hurdle race, okay. Uh, in the athletic competition you must have seen the hurdle race, where you are supposed to run fast and there are hurdles of a similar, of a particular height that is put on the track, no. All you have to do is that you will keep uh, running and once you have the hurdle you have to jump and cross it, okay. Attack is a situation similar to that, okay. Examples could be, say uh, you feel hungry, okay. You feel hungry, what to do, okay. And all you know is that I have to, you know, vigorously search for a location where I can find food. Uh, if you look uh, certain programs of discovery or national geography, okay, where they show that you no, know, these are the set of people who were lost in certain uh, situation, what do they do? And then you realize that again you take a different mode of attack where you know that the ready-made stuff is not available and therefore you go searching for, hunting for food that can help you survive, okay. So attack would be, you know, or say for example, you know that tomorrow is the quiz, this is just hypothetical example, okay. That tomorrow is the quiz and therefore tonight you will definitely turn the pages of your notebook, okay. That is the attack process, okay. I know the target that has to be achieved and I know what has to be done and I directly do exactly what is needed, that is what is attack. This is the first form of task oriented reaction pattern. Second, uh, frustration and direct action. Now this is based on the tendency towards increased activity and variation in the mode of response when responses are <coughs> encountered. I am coming forward with a respo response in a given situation and then you encounter me, okay. The fact that you have encountered my response and I am supposed uh, you know, to gain the target it invokes certain degree of frustration because you are the source that is not allowing me to achieve my target. That leads to a sense of frustration, okay. And hence all I do is that I will, you know, get engaged in a much more vigorous activity, you know. So I increase my activity or I go for variation in the pattern that I have adopted to encounter it. Take the same example. You have quiz tomorrow, okay. You are trying to turn the pages of your notebook to realize that the person just next to you 
okay, in the adjoining room, you know, plays a music at the loudest volume. Okay, something that distracts you. Okay, now it is a great source of frustration for you because you know that I have only these many hours left now. Okay, tomorrow morning 8 o'clock quiz, so what do I do now? You know, you are the one who would know usually very silently read the text, suddenly starts you know, reading it aloud. This is an increase in the activity. Okay. Or you go for adopting a variation in the style. Okay. So, you know that this song will be played till uh, say 12 midnight. So, I will study after 12 or I will wait till this uh, no, uh, music system is switched <coughs> off. Then I will study even though if I have to compromise with sleeping tonight, I will compromise with it. I would not sleep tonight. Okay. Another variation could be that you go confront the individual, okay, make him switch off the audio system, come back to your room and then study. There could be you no know, multiple types of variations. Now, you can move to another location and uh, read there. Okay. So, frustration and uh, direct action reflects to, to this type of a task oriented reaction pattern. Third type of a situation where you have conflicts and you have to choose. In conflicting situations, one can attack problems by analyzing the advantages and disadvantages of the options. Okay. You make your objectives and then you take a informed decision. Okay. There could be different types of conflicts. No? You could have a approach approach conflict for example, there are two things equally attractive, but then only one can be approached at this time. What do you do now? Okay. I am not advertising for any uh, company, uh, but say you have two films coming at the same time on two different channels and of course, you do not have Tata Sky, okay. you cannot record one of the movies, then what do you do? Okay. Uh, imagine a situation no, uh, when uh, you have one attractive and one repulsive type of a situation. You are not well prepared for the quiz and you know that you are probably going to get 0 if the instructor has not put a negative mark. Okay. Uh, again, it is hypothetical example. No? Uh, now, uh, what happens in situations like this where you know that if I participate in the act, then I might have a negative score or a 0 score, okay. but if I uh, no, do not participate, then that it can again be very detrimental because uh, no, I lose 10 percent or 20 percent weightage uh, from this whole uh, scoring system that will give me a grade. Okay. You want to move to the next semester, you do not want to have any backlogs, you do not want to be retained for uh, summer courses, you do not want AP or warning categorization. Okay. This is what is called as approach avoidance conflict you want to approach something, but there is a price that you have to pay for it. That price you want to avoid. Okay. Likewise, there are couple of uh, you know, types of conflicts that one encounters in life, but once you have uh, you no know, situations like this in your life where uh, you have uh, you no know, certain conflicts, all we do is that we would weigh the option. So, what is it that I lose out of doing it or what is it that I gain out of doing that and if I do not do it, then what is it that I am going to lose. Okay. <clears throat> For example, uh, no, the instructor tells you that fine by Sunday, you should be submitting the second assignment okay, as email. Okay. After Sunday, the lines would be closed, even if you submit, your submission will not be accepted. Okay there is a price now that is put. Okay. If I say that all, uh, all of them who respond to different assignments on due time, okay, the weightage will be computed and this will be taken as your class participation score will be generated out of it, because you are participating in assignments which are given to the whole class. Okay. The moment you realize, oh, it also is finally going to add to the grade. Okay, you know 
that, that there is a dis disadvantage in not participating <coughs> in that. I don't know how many of you have sent mail after uh, last afternoon. The last time I checked mail was last afternoon when I saw four or five mails, not more than that. Okay. We have 59 registered students in this course, four mails for the second assignment. Okay. Now you weigh the option. Okay. The conflict would be, should I do this or should I you know, think of the possible scenarios in, uh, you know, as part of the dimensions of subjective adjustment and give examples, what do I do? So, uh, say uh, playing futa cricket in the hall of residence is important than thinking and writing, you evaluate. No? Every time we do that, no? for small of the activities of life as well as for the biggest things in life, we will always be like that. No? And then you have certain objectives in mind, I want to attain this level. Okay? A uh, very interesting example, it is not related to this course, but I heard it from some other instructor. A uh, student who was uh, doing exceptionally good in a course, uh, suddenly told the instructor that I am sl sliding below in some other course. Okay. And in this course, because I will manage with a B, I need to pay more attention to that course because I have been compromising. And if I do not perform well in that course, then my overall CPI will go down. Hence, the person concerned declared that now onwards I will devote less time to this and more time to that course. Okay. And the instructor told me that that concerned student would definitely have got A, but later on because of certain things had <coughs> got B in that course. But then the student concerned was very happy because got B in course where uh, she would have definitely got A. But in the course where she was contemplating she will get C or D, she could manage with a B. Now this is you know certain type of objective that you, you know decide for your own self and then you try to attain it. Okay? And all of this is based on certain informed decisions you make. No? That if I do this then this will happen, if I do that then that will happen, what if I do this, what if I do not do this. Okay? This is how we try to resolve conflicts in our life. And the last one is when you are under tremendous pressure and you have to resist to it. Okay. Now, usually people uh, will resist to undue pressures, no? especially when uh, you consider that this is an arbitrary and this is not warranted. Okay. Then you try to resist, but there are certain type of pressures where you are helpless. Okay. Uh, I should not give this example, but to help you relate it much better. Say end semester schedule is declared and you are told that you will have two exams okay, on the same day. Okay. Somebody uh, told me, I do not know how far this was correct, that three exams in one day for one student because of the courses that he had credited. Okay. Now there is a great degree of pressure on you because you have two exams or three exams in a day, but you do not have a choice. Okay. So, there is a great degree of pressure on you and you simply uh, have to you know you have no choice, but to accept it, you cannot resist back. There could be certain type of pressures on you, which you can very easily resist. And there are certain type of subtle pressures, which you take time to understand that this was also a form of pressure. Okay. Such are the pressures, say for example, uh, you come to a hostel. Okay. And uh, say a uh, good friend of your mother tells her that uh, you should certainly keep an eye on your son. He is an adolescent boy going all alone, he will be a free bird. Okay. And then your mother proudly says, I am proud of my son. I am very sure he will never do anything wrong. I have nurtured him this way. Now, if your mother tells you this type of statement couple of times, this is basically a pressure on you, which usually in the first go you will never realize that this was a pressure. Okay, because she is all she is saying is that I have drawn certain unseen lines, okay, and you are supposed not to cross it. Okay, and <coughs> repeatedly saying this that I believe in my son, I have faith in my son is basically a form of pressure, which gradually you realize that okay, this is a you know format that is being prescribed, and I have to adhere according to it. So, these were the four task-oriented reaction patterns. 
uh, tomorrow when we'll meet, we'll talk about the damage repair mechanisms.